Hi everyone, it's Stu here from 3B. In this video, I'm going to take you through some of the things that you should consider when you're looking to set up a surround sound system, whether it's just a, a standard sort of 5.1 all the way up to something huge and glorious like a, a 7.1.4 or even beyond. But there's quite a few things that you should always consider uh, when setting up a surround sound system. And through this video and maybe a couple more, I'll discuss with you some of those things that you need to consider uh, before you actually go out and buy these things. So let's move on. Okay, the first thing that you should consider when, when you're buying anything really is, is how much you're willing to spend. But today you can get through just a few hundred pounds or through hundred, a few hundred dollars, a relatively decent AV amp. And the thing to consider first is your budget because then this has an impact on the surround sound setup that you then look to uh, develop from that. You can, just for a 5.1 system, standard surround, without Atmos, you can get that for just a few hundred pounds. And then for just a sort of a, a few hundred pounds more than that, you can get a 5.1.2 Atmos setup with just the front Atmos speakers. So those are the first things that you should consider. You should consider how much you're willing to spend on an AV amp. Um, there's some very good uh, amps from Denon in this range, uh, Marantz too, and Yamaha also do some really good amps. Denon do some good ones that also do Atmos, um, just below uh, the 500 pound mark. But if you're just looking for 5.1, uh, there's some really good opportunities for you to get a, a, you know, a good solid amp for just a couple of hundred pounds. Even on eBay, you can pick up some really good AV amps um, for 5.1 as people are moving more towards 5.1.2 or 5.1.4, so Atmos, um, relatively cheaply. So look out on eBay as well if your sort of budget constraints are, are looking sort of a little bit slimmer, shall we say. So the first thing to consider, of course, is your budget. The next thing you should consider is how many speakers you're going to set up. And of course this is tied in with with your with the budget that you set for your AV amp because that has an impact on the number of speakers that it can power. The majority of films are either mixed in 5.1 or 7.1. Beyond that there I don't know of any movies that go beyond 7.1. Then uh, there are the Atm Atmos uh, mixed um, tracks, and it will just say Atmos, and that includes um, front and back, and it's up to your AV amp to uh, decode whether it's just going to do the front or the front and back. 5.1, the standard surround is five speakers of um, five surround speakers and one sub. So how that works, you have a center channel, two front left and right speakers, and then two side speakers left and right for the surround. They're sort of placed just left and right of you. And then you've got a center channel that does all the um, uh, vocal work. All the, so there's one of the most important speakers actually that, that you will have. Um, and then you have the sub, which does all the bass. So that's 5.1. Then we have 5.1.2. Now this is where things get a little bit interesting because the 0.2 is the Atmos speakers. They're the ones that add the height. So those are usually set in line with the front left and right, and they're put either up high, either set in the ceiling or on the, or on the wall um, projecting down depending on what type of speakers you have. There's many options there. You can also have speakers that design where they uh, place on top of your existing uh, front left and right speakers and then fire up and project down again. Those don't work so well. The ones that work better are the ones where you can actually place the speaker up high to add that physical height element to, to, to that 5.1. 
Then beyond that, we have 5.1.4, and no surprise that what that is, is that it's, as well as two height speakers at the front, you have two height speakers at the back. We're now moving to 7.1, where things sort of 5.1 and 7.1 are, are the mainstays of surround. The difference with 7.1 is that you have two rear left and right speakers behind you. So as well as the front left and right, the side left and right, you have two right at the back behind you, left and right also, as well as the center channel and the sub. Then we get to 7.1.2, which is like 5.1.2, where we add the height speakers. So that's the only difference. We add the two front height speakers. Then we have the front left and right, side left and right, and the rear left and right. And then we have 7.1.4, which again is like the 5.1.4, but we've got the two, the, the additional two height rear speakers as well, as well as the two rear speakers uh, placed behind us as well. So those are the key differences. Anyone that's gonna move more towards 9.1 or 11.1 or 11.1.4 or those, you know, that's just crazy. Those kind of setups are beyond the realms of most, the majority of most sort of living room theatres, I would say. You would then, you're then looking more towards a setup that's actually physically just a home cinema, and that's all it is. It's a room specially designed for that. When, once you get to sort of 11.1 uh, or 9.1.4, 11.1.4 or beyond that, you're then, you will either need a very big room and a very understanding spouse to have all these speakers around you, or you're using a, a, a home cinema. You actually have a home, a room that you can designate as a home cinema. That's the only time that you would want that. At the moment, sort of 7.1.4 really is the limit for most rooms that you're actually going to live in as well without it being too overcrowded. In the UK, I would say what I have right now is the limit for most living rooms, sort of 5.1.4, um, maybe 7.1.4, but you know, our rooms are slightly smaller than, you know, because only a small island, come on. Um, but yeah, so those are the things you really need to consider. What kind of surround are you looking for? Um, and also understand that all the the majority of movies are, are mixed in 5.1, 7.1, or Atmos. So beyond that, all that your amp is going to do is replicate sounds from the sound processed from another speaker. It's not going to do any fundam anything under anything fundamentally different with that extra channel. It's just copying an existing channel as well. Um, so those are the things you need to consider uh, and now we'll move on to some other things that you need to think about before you buy your system. Next we need to understand whether we want wired or Bluetooth um, speakers. Uh, wired is always best. You're not going to get any latency with a wired speaker. Um, when you mention, or when people like me mention wired speakers and those that have never had a surround sound system always kind of cringe, they imagine wires everywhere. And there kind of is a degree of that, but it's not as bad as it may seem and things have got a lot more sensible and more tidier than what they used to be. Furthermore, it's very easy now to get incredibly thin, high quality speaker cable that you can either lay flat under rugs or carpets or even, you know, uh, sort of micro cable that I use um, from QED that you can place just around and tack around the room. It's always best to consider the wired approach first, um, simply because the quality is going to be a lot better. There's not going to be any latency at all. However, not everyone is prepared to do that. Um, and there are options for uh, Bluetooth speakers um, that you can uh, use as a surround setup. Um, this is amp dependent, of course, because not all um, amps will rely on, will work with Bluetooth speakers, and they tend to only work with Bluetooth speakers 
of their particular make. So sort of Denon tends to work best with its HEOS speakers, which are Bluetooth, which are really good. Um, and then, you know, they do work with other Bluetooth speakers, but, you know, it's always best to stick with the, the brand that you're using with the AVM. But you're always going to get latency with uh, Bluetooth speakers, no matter how good they are. And they have improved incredibly, even just in the last couple of years, but there still is a degree of latency that you have to consider. And what that can mean is if you're watching something on screen, whether that's on your TV, or whether that's uh, also on a projection, is that what you're going to see is that, that that sound reaction that you expect to hear from a visual clue uh, on screen is just going to be slightly out. And when that happens, that can be, that can be a little jarring. And there are a lot of audio Bluetooth technologies now that are coming out that are, that are really good. Um, but also this has an impact if you move down the Bluetooth route on the cost of your system because Bluetooth speakers for surround are not cheap. Amps that support Bluetooth in terms of a surround system, again, are not cheap too. Always, if you can, the cheapest option is wired, wired speakers, um, and think of that first because that's your cheapest and also in terms of sound, uh, in terms of latency, that's your best option. If you must go down the Bluetooth option, uh, that's gonna co increase the cost of your budget considerably and also add some other elements um, that can go wrong and also add some sort of delay and what have you. So those are things that you should consider too. So there are certainly a lot of options in terms of the content that you're looking to connect to the AV amp. And the thing you need to consider with that is not all AV amps that use HDMI um, will have uh, 4K compliant HDMI inputs. Also, not every AV amp will have outputs that are all 4K HDMI um, compliant. So it's important and, and it's important to look into that and to understand how many connections you're, how many inputs you're going to connect to and how and what, what those sources are and how many outputs you're going to connect to it. So whether you're just connecting your screen, your TV, or whether you're connecting your screen and your projector at the same time and what those, you know, is it a 4K TV and is it a 4K projector? In which case you need 4K outputs on both channels on those outputs. So those are very important things to consider. So don't be swayed just because the fact that it's cheap, that it's going to automatically do the, uh, be able to process the content that you're putting into it. It's also, it's always a good idea to check that. The next thing to consider is placement. Um, placement is kind of key because you're going to be living with these speakers. Uh, you can get, um, you can get really small, tiny speakers for surround and, uh, you know, surround sound systems. I really wouldn't recommend them. You know, you, there are a lot of, of so-called sort of lifestyle systems. Um, when everything, when anything is called lifestyle, I know that's going to be crap. The other thing to consider, of course, is the soundbar approach. Um, I'm not a big fan of soundbars, and I've had a few over the years. Um, they're, they're great to, as an addition to your TV, uh, but that's all I would say they're good for. If you know, A lot of TVs now have pretty crappy sound because the speakers, the screens are very small anyway, very slim, and they tend to have downward firing speakers which are not of a brilliant quality. And uh, this tends to sort of muddy um, uh, the, the sort of the, the vocal track um, in, 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 in mixes. So it tends to sort of make things appear a little bit muddy. And, you know, a lot of people have complained over the years that it's hard to hear what people are saying in movies, you know, what the dialogue is. Um, so if, if you have that problem and you're on a very tight budget, then just get a sound bar. Um, when it goes to sort of surround sound and Atmos sound bars, eh, they're okay. 
they're okay. They're not great. They're sort of, you know, if you really don't want surround sound speakers with even Bluetooth, uh, and you've, yeah, I, you know, I'm not a fan, but you know, they've got better. They've got a lot better. There's some brilliant ones from Yamaha. Sonos do some good ones now. Um, there's some, there's some good speakers, good uh, soundbar speakers out there. But as a rule, if you're really serious about surround, I would, I would look to always move to a proper surround sound setup with an AV amp, speakers, and so on. Or you, you, you're going to be blow with what you could get for what you'd spend on a decent sound bar you could get a really good surround sound system um, for the same price that would sound an awful lot better. It's just, it's not going to be in a nice fancy box. It's just going to be a set of speakers and an AV amp, but it will sound an awful lot better and will be far more flexible. So always, always consider that first. Um, never just immediately consider that uh, a sound bar or, you know, even if they say they're Atmos, all they're going to do is fire up sound up to the ceiling. And even the best Atmos speakers that you put on speakers that fire up to the ceiling and back down, they don't sound as good as what a properly placed Atmos speaker, either high up on the wall or in the ceiling, would ever sound. So always consider that. Always look as to a sound bar as kind of a last option. If you can't have, you can't convince your spouse to have speakers around the room and they're not that bad. Um, and um, whether you just, you know, don't, don't assume that because it's an AV amp and there's speakers involved in connections, that it's beyond, that it's going to be really difficult. It's actually not that difficult to set up. Um, they're a lot easier than what they used to be. And in fact, they're no more difficult to set up than a sound bar, to be fair. In terms of sort of speaker size, you can have floor mounted, um, um, floor sort of, you can have sp uh, speakers that are sort of shelf speakers. Uh, but if you can move towards a front pair of um, floor standing speakers for the front, um, and then a good quality sort of center channel and sub, and then smaller speakers for your surround and Atmos. That tends to work out quite well. You get a good sound stage with that. People think that the speakers, because we see these images of sort of the diagrams of where the speakers are, that it tends to be very invasive. It tends to, we tend to think that they're going to be sort of in our face. And in lots of ways, they're not. Um, they're no more than what they are in the average room. And you can, you know, at, at, at most, what most people see in the room that I have, in, in my living room here is that most people just notice the floor standing speakers and they think it's a stereo. Uh, and then it's only when they've sat down for a longer period that they notice that there's some other speakers around. So they're very discreet these days, even the, you know, even mine that are on sort of <laughs> on, on beige walls and you've got these black speakers. But you can even make them even more discreet because you can get sort of there's, there's, you can get them in colors that sort of aug augment more with, with the coloring of, of, of your sort of surroundings as well. It's always a good idea to understand where your speakers are going to go, um, where the placement of these speakers should be. Don't, you know, if they're bookshelf speakers, then that's not too bad. You can tend to put those anywhere. Um, if they're more floor standing speakers, sometimes these need to be pushed a bit further away from the wall. Um, so yeah, there's a lot to consider with the speaker placement. And there's also some great packages with speakers, um, you know, all the way from, you know, I, I've got some uh, uh, Q acoustics um, and I've got some Dali sensors and they, they tend to work pretty well together. Uh, uh, Bowers and Wilkins do some great speakers as well. Um, and Yamaha too do some, you know, some great speakers and, and JBL do some good ones at the low end as well. So there's some, some good options there with terms of speakers and good opportunities for you to buy. Um, 
I know there's a lot of people that say, you know, try and stick with the same brand, and yeah, I would, I would certainly do that. But when it comes to sort of adding uh, Atmos speakers, you tend not to be able to get the same brand. So don't worry too much. The reason I say don't worry too much is because most AV amps now have a setup where they will set up all the speakers so they sound as good as they should be without sort of, um, they'll calibrate the sound to a sound curve for each and every speaker. So it doesn't really matter too much what the brand is because the AV amp will adjust that, that speaker channel to reflect to a curve that's uh, designed to work well with, with surround anyway. So I wouldn't worry too much about sort of m mixing and matching brands too much. Just don't go too crazy having a separate brand for each and every speaker. So those are the things to consider with placement, um, your speakers and your sound bar. So let's move on to the next subject. The other thing you need to consider is, as part of your budget, is um, part of your budget has to be set aside for cabling and with that you need um, quality HDMI leads. Um, not all HDMI leads are the same. You need them to be at least 4K certified. Um, if, your con if your projector, for instance, is over 10 meters away or over, I would say, 7 meters away, you would then be advised, in my view, to, to use an optical HDMI, and, and those are expensive. Um, the, certainly if your, H, if your projector is a 4K projector, I would then use an optical HDMI lead. So it's always best to consider that there's always peripheral things that you're going to need to get once you've got your amp, once you've got your speakers, uh, and those are things like cable, um, uh, sort of power bricks, you know, where you've got everything all ganged together so you've not got a million and one plugs on one, on one socket, or, you know, in terms of sort of H, uh, 4K HDR certified um, HDMI leads as well. So those are all things that you need to consider. And I would always recommend that when you're setting up a system, just get rid of all the HDMI leads that you have because chances are they may be old, they may just be 1.4 and that's not going to help help work with 4K content at all. So make sure that um, you know they're, they're the latest 4K HDR certified cables and then just start afresh all with the same brand and then uh, the same with the speaker cable. If you're wiring speakers, um, you know, use the same brand throughout if possible. And uh, it's a good way to go. And it makes life a lot easier. And you will, uh, I, would, I would usually say you're going to spend 10% of your budget on cabling. I would, I would pretty much say it would be 10% of your budget on cabling. Uh, that's always what you should put aside. Uh, that's the, sort of the tends to be the, the rule with audio uh, when you're setting up like a hi-fi or anything. Sort of the cables, you always have a budget that 10% of your budget will go on cables alone. So it tends, it's getting more that way also with sort of surround and audio video stuff as well. So just bear that in mind. You have your AV amp, you know what uh, type of surround you're going for. You have all your cables, you have um, your your speakers, you you have everything ready. Um, and there's just some sort of hints and tips that I want to give uh, you so um, that it sort of saves an awful lot of time. First thing to consider is I would um, make sure that you've got um, a good amount of room behind your AV amp uh, because trust me you, <laughs> you're going to be spending a bit of time behind there over the years. Um, there, there's always times when a cable just gets knocked out or or you know you're going to have to sort of you, you decide to upgrade something or buy, buy a new console or buy a new a 4k uh, blu-ray or whatever and you're plugging that into the unit or you're swapping things around. So always make sure that the back of your AV amp is easy, easily accessible. 
And to that end, I don't have one here, but um, I would recommend getting a cabinet that's easily moved. The cabinet I have isn't particularly easy. It's made out of cast iron, um, but I would recommend getting a cabinet that's on you know, wheels so you can put it out easily. Um, also make sure there's enough slack in the connections that you have in terms of your the way you're wiring in the speakers, the way you're wiring in all the HDMI leads. Don't sort of make them too tight or that they're, you know, tacked into somewhere. So when you do pull it out, it's gonna sort of pull or add tension to it. So you want it so you can pull it out, gain access to it, and there's enough slack there for you to move and manage things. So those are one of the first thing I would consider on that front. The other thing to consider is that I would um, strongly recommend getting a cabinet that has a lot of airflow within it. Um, a lot of cabinets tend to be uh, very closed and this can have an effect on the remote that you use. Uh, so you'll find sometimes that um, the actual cabinet is not allowing you to, to, to so the, the infrared is not going through the cabinet enough. Uh, the other thing to consider, an important thing to consider, is that AV amps get incredibly hot, really, really hot. Um, you'll be surprised how hot they get. And to that end, they need a lot of airflow around them. So it's important to make sure that, at the very least, that your cabinet has is an open back, um, or ideally is is open front and open back, so it gets some kind of airflow airflow through. Um, it's the, the other thing, there's, a, there's been an un, ongoing argument for years and years within the audio field in terms of whether banana plugs are better or just bare wire. Um, I don't have any real preference. Um, banana plugs are, ba are great if, certainly if you know the exact measurements of the cable that you're buying. And what I would recommend buying is, and it will be an awful lot cheaper, is to get a one long length of cable. Um, so work out pretty much, you know, next to the nearest three or four meters of how much cable you would need for, for all of your speakers and then add that as one and then just get one massive length of cable. This allows you then to a, a degree of flexibility. Once you have buy a cable that's pre-cut to a certain length, you're stuck with that length. So I would recommend buying a set reel of cable um, and you'll be surprised how much you would need. Um, and it's always best to overestimate than to underestimate. Um, and for the sake of a few extra dollars or pounds to get that right is hugely important and saves a lot of stress. Um, in terms of how you want to wire it, um, it makes no difference to the sound. Um, banana plugs make things more convenient uh, they're a little less, little less faffing around, but you still have to wire them in. Um, they can, you know, when you've got like, you know, nine channels, ten channels to wire on both ends, that can take some time. And and really, there's no difference to the sound when you have uh, bare wire or, or um, you know banana plugs. It really doesn't matter which way you're uh, wiring them up. Um, it doesn't uh, cause any issues. Just with bare wire, you have to be a little bit more careful in terms of making sure that there's no sort of bare wires touching the other terminals because then that can cause it um, to, uh, you can get some hum uh, coming through and no one wants that. So those are the things to consider. The, I've mentioned this as regards HDMI leads, make sure they're all 4K compliant. Um, just look for the certified. Um, they'll have a little certified, 4K certified note, uh, sort of label on the box or actually on the lead itself. So make sure you get those. Um, the other thing I would recommend is that now you can, um, and, and actually this is how I have my speakers on the wall. Um, I don't drill holes. Uh, you kind of don't need to drill holes anymore. And what you can do is you can get these Velcro adhesive, um, super strong adhesive Velcro uh, strips. 
that you can place on the wall and then on your speaker and they will hold them. In, they're incredibly good, they're by 3M. There are some other brands out there, but the ones I use are by 3M. And they have a weight gauge on them. They're designed for hanging things like mirrors and pictures and so on. I use them for a lot of my pictures. I don't know if you can see any here, but I have them all hung up with these, these incredibly strong Velcro strips and I use them also for my speakers, uh, for my for, certainly for my rear Atmos speakers, I think you can see that one behind, that's actually held up by these 3M strips. And it makes things an awful lot more convenient and um, certainly say if you're in a rented accommodation, um, the, the, the landlord certainly wouldn't want you drilling holes in the wall and these things just simply, when you've finished using them and you don't want to use them anymore, take the speaker off or whatever you're hanging up and you can just pull them and they'll just come clean off without taking any paint or anything off. So they're really good, I'd really recommend them. Um, the other thing to consider is um, that you will need, I would recommend spending a whole day getting everything set up. Get everything set out um, where you want the speakers uh, and then also understand where you as the main viewer is going to sit. Now this is where it gets a bit selfish. This is where you're going to have to be a bit selfish because when you calibrate your speakers and you're using your AV amp you get a little microphone usually and it does these sound bursts through each speaker and it calibrates it to a sound curve. So they're all the same and the volume is adjusted for the distance. That is all focused on usually a seated position of one person. Um, on the Denon it does I think eight points, um, but it's usually uh, sort of eight points around a settee or a sofa. For the best experience, and this is this is really where you have to be selfish. Um, if it's just you that's predominantly going to enjoy the surround, and your spouse is a bit sort of, yeah, I don't really care so much for it, then I would make all those uh, positions that you put the microphone centered around your one seated position because the, the more focused those speakers are to be set up for one single position, the better. The broader the position, and it really sh should never be more than two feet away from the single first measurement, uh, but the more broader you go, the less feeling of surround you get because that setup is trying to, or the AV amp is trying to set itself up for a wider um, audience. So if you've got, you know, if you're setting it up and it's oh, the one paying for it, <laughs> be selfish. Just have one seated position and then have it work around them. If, you're, if your partner or spouse or whoever is less keen, you know, is, is excited about it, but probably won't notice the difference, then, you know, you, you, you just make, make it for yourself. Make it for yourself, but don't tell them. Don't tell them. So that's what I would recommend you do uh, before you sort of set up everything. It's, it's, it's always a good idea to make sure that um, you've got plenty of room behind your amp and easy access, that you know where your speakers are going to be before you set them up, that you know who the audience is going to be. Is it just going to be you that's going to pre predominantly enjoy the surround sound system and your partner spouse is sort of less keen but still excited then kind of make that calibration when it's when it's time to set that up more centered around your seated position than on a, on a wider than on a wider seated position um, consider you know there's things like everything has an impact on your budget so whether you're going sort of simple 5.1 or anything up to um, you know, 7.1.4 or beyond. So the, everything is driven by the number of speakers you want to drive, the type of surround that you want, uh, whether you're having Bluetooth speakers, whether you're having wide speakers, whether you're having small bookshelf or stats, uh, floor standing speakers. There's all these things that you need to consider. Um, but it's exciting. Um, when you really set it up for the first time and you hear surround uh, and, and Atmos, 
and it's not something perhaps you've experienced before, you've experienced it to a lesser degree. You know, most people tend to move from sort of sound bars up to 5.1 or beyond. Uh, you know, it really does, it really is exciting. And it really adds an enormous element to the enjoyment of your movies. And in more so games now, I enjoy them enormously uh, more than I ever did now that I have a, a 5.1.4 um, Atmos setup. It works great with the Xbox One X. So I hope these um, meandering videos have been of use to you. Um, I've tried to edit them down because <laughs> I know I can talk. I know I can talk. Um, and um, I hope that they've proven useful. Please click the bell to be alerted when I'm doing more videos. Uh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe also. So thanks again. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you very soon. Bye.